Hello, everyone. So today I am very lucky to be joined by a very special guest with me for a chat about all things film photography, one of the best known and most influential personalities on the film photography scene worldwide. I am, of course, he's shaking his head, but I am, of course, talking about Mr. Bellamy Hunt from Japan Camera Hunter. How are you, Bellamy? I'm very well, Matt. Thanks for having me on your show. Um, yeah, yeah, and the flattering introduction. <laughs> you're you're <laughs> blushing a little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I don't think I'd ever class myself as that, but yeah. Oh, I think you are. Thanks. A lot of people do. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me on. I'm really looking forward to it. And, That's great. Uh, Excellent. Yeah. So for the people who might be listening or watching through YouTube or through the podcast who haven't heard of you, I'm sure there's only probably a very small handful of people who haven't heard of you, but can you sort of tell us a little bit about yourself and, and what you do? And, and yeah. Sure. Um, so my name is Bellamy Hunt and I run japancamerahunter.com, um, which I've been doing for the last 10 years with not just myself, the help of others too. And um, I sell and source fine film cameras um, around the world, not just cameras, lenses, camera accessories, everything sort of film photography related. And we also mm -hmm. run uh, Japan Camera Hunter as a site so that where people can have their work shared and, and you know, you can see up and coming photographers. Mm. It, so it's not just about selling gear, it's about photography and film photography and and sort of promoting the whole community absolutely yeah absolutely yeah. so uh, i guess my first question is this i'm an avid watcher of your instagram live streams uh which seem yeah. to be very popular you you get a lot of people watching concurrently all around the world and uh you know you're, you're very uh very good at doing the live streams and handling <laughs> handling the crowd and all that um <laughs> but i must i must say you get asked about a lot of cameras uh during those live streams so i guess looking back at the last 10 15 years or however long you've been selling cameras what yeah. camera do you get asked about the most? Um, that's probably going to be the cameras that I'm known for, really. Um, the Nikon F3, the Leica M6, Leica MP. Uh, those are the ones that I get mm -hmm. just, you know, a ton of requests for. Yeah. Um, it, it's funny because uh, sometimes a camera will be featured on somebody else's video and I'll just all of a sudden get a whole load of ding, 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 ding. <laughs> I'm looking for, you know, yeah. I'm looking for the RZ67 because yeah. somebody got it on their video or something. That's but generally crazy. it's uh, either contacts, you know, contacts T2s, T3s, that sort mm -hmm. of thing, or uh, Leica and Nikon, uh, sure. particularly F3, FM3. Yeah. Yeah. Now, one question I've got for later on in, in my sort of order of questions, but I might just do them out of order. Um, now, a few years ago, I, like I've read in your site, the Rico GR guide, which is fantastic. But you do say yeah. at the bottom of the Rico GR guide, I'm no longer, I think this is from 2012. I'm no longer selling yeah. these cameras. They're too unreliable. I don't want to sell people a lemon. But I have noticed yeah. recently, you've, you've got a, a few point and shoots back on the JCH website. So I never stopped selling uh, point and shoot cameras. Mm -hmm. um, I stopped sourcing them. Sure. Okay. Right? So I, I didn't want to go and find a camera from somewhere and then have them, you know, a month later at brick. Yeah. Uh, so I decided that if I was going to sell compact cameras, um, they would only come from places that I trusted. Yep. I would sell them on consignment or I would sell them directly knowing that they had been either treated very well or in some yeah. way refurbished or CLA or, or something to that effect. So I have been selling um, point and shoots, but with a notable exception being the Ricoh. Sure. And the reason why is because once they stopped being serviced by Ricoh, I didn't have anywhere to have them serviced. Mm. And so there was just no way I could guarantee the Ricoh, which is a crying shame because it's a great camera. Mm. Um but I also felt like the prices were getting a bit out of whack as well. And I didn't want to, you know, add fuel to the fire. Yeah, it, sure. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I miss selling those. I liked having the Ricoh around. I liked yeah. shooting with it. Yeah. Um, but we Which did, one was your yeah. favorite, the GR1V or? Um, GR1V, yeah. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Um, or GR21. Yep. You it didn't mind like the that. super wide angle? Yeah, I didn't. I really like that one. It was perfect for the street stuff. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, but, but yeah, we we still kept on selling. And every now and again, if I find something really weird, esoteric, you mm -hmm. know, I still want to 
be able to sell it. So, uh, but only if I know that I can guarantee it's going to be good. Great. Now, I think recently on an Instagram live, probably going back to last year, uh, I think you yep. said you were sending some, I think it was GR cameras to somewhere in Poland yep. for repair. Yes. Have you heard, had any yep. uh, progress with getting them repaired yet or? Frustratingly, no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, this guy, we were contacted by uh, a chap who said, I can repair these cameras. And we said, really? You know, fantastic. Um, yeah send us a list of what you can repair and yeah. he sent me a list. And so I gathered three or four, um, you know, from friends, GRs mm -hmm. and said, right, I'll send them over. And I sent them over and it, it's taken like a month and a half just to get a quote out. Uh, of sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I understand he's probably yeah. very busy. It's not his own business. So, you know, I gave him a fair bit of leeway, but you know, so far it's been a case of, Hey, you know, where are the cameras when I mail him? How's it going? What's yeah. the program? Yeah. It's just one line replies back going, yeah, we're just waiting on this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so, um, I'm sure they're going to be fine. It's just taking a while, but then again, I really would say to anyone, don't expect to have a complex camera repaired in a, space of a week yeah you know? yeah for sure even for classic cameras now most places are looking at two three six months backlog just for basic clas so yeah and that's the thing like i mean i have a lot of uh, electronic cameras i love point and shoots and you will hear some people in forums say things like oh, i only buy mechanical cameras because they can be repaired but the issue is unfortunately uh, repair people are getting older retiring um, dying yeah. in some cases you know and the yeah. parts are getting less and less the wait times are blowing out so although yeah. your mechanical cameras are great it doesn't necessarily mean if you buy one you, you know it's, it's you know every life's all peachy sort of thing yeah. um so there yeah you go. well that's that's yep. entirely true i mean mm. there's still stuff on mechanical cameras that breaks and once it's broken it's broken yeah you know true. and not every camera can be replaced or repaired or yeah so um people i think sometimes aren't really cognizant of what can and cannot be done yeah sure um and so i think it sort of pays to do a little bit of research before you go out and buy anything really doesn't it yeah absolutely um, yeah and if you know if a good example being the contacts 2 and 2a 2b you know um from the looks of it it's a mechanical camera you know shouldn't be a problem but they have terrible shutter issues which are really complex and mm -hmm. you know really hard to repair and it can end up costing you far more than the camera cost yeah. you know yeah. so you have to just be aware of that i think mm. yeah excellent so i've actually got looking at your site i mean quite often i look at your for sale page and i kind of think uh yeah. you know uh you know so many beautiful likers and nikons and other things on there um, but I do actually have a few of the cameras that you've got for sale at the moment. I was quite like, wow, I mean, I don't have any, I've only got one Nikon, an FM3 over there, and I don't have a Leica, sadly, uh, but I've got right. a few of the cameras that you have. So I've got this beautiful Ooh, Minolta TC1. TC1. You've got it for sale at the moment? Not yes, this I one have. in particular, but... <laughs> um, I would say that's one of, arguably, one of my favorite compacts, not in mm. terms of usability. It's got a horrible interface. It's, it, like it's it? the finder is absolutely minuscule, you mm. know, but yeah. the rock or lens on that yeah. is incredible. And that perfectly circular aperture, it makes for some very interesting shots. It's It's got this aspherical element in it that it shouldn't be in a compact camera. Mm. You know? um, they went to town. They pushed yeah. the boat out when they made that camera. Yeah. Awkward, difficult to use, but really great results. So. And it, it has, um, yeah, it has the beautiful four apertures that you can use there. I, yep. I, I really like it. I mean, it's got this dial on the top and, you know, to yeah. it's a weird thing. You sort of swing it around for, you know, uh, for manual focus distance or for exposure compensation or change the ISO. Yeah. It's a really weird thing at first, but you, you kind of get used to it. But you're right, mm. the, the viewfinder is tiny. And I mean, luckily mine doesn't have the issue that a lot of them have is that uh, little tiny little light leak. There um, is a light leak on the top left-hand corner. And yep. I'm not joking. I, I used to have these cameras uh, serviced by Kenko Tokina, Konica Minolta, which is mouthful. Yeah. Um, and they no longer offer the service, oh, unfortunately. No. And I would say 70 or 80% of the cameras that I sent were for that exact oh, issue. Oh, no, yeah. 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 It, it was either that they would brick or that they would have a light leak. 
in yeah. the same spot, which is apparently the light baffles next to the lens. So. Right, sure. Well, luckily yeah. mine, uh, I got this probably late last year. Luckily mine's okay for the moment. So fingers crossed. Really good. It doesn't develop that issue. The next one, now this isn't exactly what you've got on your yeah. um, site. This is the, well, I think you might have one of the, I know you've got a black one, a T3. We've got two black T2s at yep. the moment, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yep. Same deal. Beautiful cameras. Yes. Yeah, very much so. Um, I used them for an awful long time. I really enjoyed using them. Yeah. Uh, I love the lens in it. Love the camera itself. Yeah. Uh, again, it's not perfect. It, it, it's the same with any compact, it, premium mm. compact. All of them have their caveats. But, yes. um, you know, it's got a good lens. It's it's easy to use it. Really great results. Yeah. It's just the price now. Yeah, crazy. <laughs> Price and is... the, with this one here, I, I got I bought from Japan actually one through eBay and it said it was a double tooth. It's single tooth. And yes. uh what I found out they um, actually refunded me some money. And guess right, what happened about two months after I got it? Right. That's the, tooth the, um, down. It's the uh the rolling of the dice you have to yes. play with eBay, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely, um, absolutely. I mean, I've seen I know places that can replace the uh the, the teeth on yep. those but i've seen hacks i've seen people just put screws in and stuff so yeah i use the the masking tape method so there's a in the, right. in the custom settings you can leave the leader out when it rewinds yeah uh, yep. so when i put a roll of film in i just use a, a two dollar roll of masking tape how, how ridiculous yep. on a two thousand dollar camera that you have to do that but it works and i'm, I'm still shooting yep. so i'm grateful for that another one that you've got on your site uh, again, again i think you've got the black one but the pen ft yeah, Pen FT. Yeah, we've got one of those. Looks yeah. very nice. Your 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 copy of that one. Yeah, it's lovely. I've I've never really shot them that much. Mm -hmm. Um, the the half frame pen cameras. I mean, they've they've got a huge following, and yeah. the lenses for those things now are yeah insane. Because mm. people you are know, adapting them, aren't they, to digital and. Well, people are, it's actually the cine crowd. Oh, that, right, yep. And so the cine crowd have decided that they want to make primes. And now that they've exhausted the Olympus OM supply and yeah. they've, Olymp they've got rid of all of the Leica R supply, you know, yep. now they're moving on to everything else. And what has been in their sights is the pen series lenses. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. And the last one I got to for show and tell here is I know this one here, the Konica Genba. Is it Kantoku? Is that how you say it? Genba Kantoku. That's way better than I could ever uh, try to say it. So this is one that uh, this is the Konica sort of um, site. Is it site foreman sort of camera? Site foreman's camera yep. is. It's yep. basically for builders and construction workers and engineers. So. Yep they could record and they still have versions which are digital now but so that they record record the work going on yep. at building sites or jobs and things like that so the thing about the Gempa Kantoku is you know there's multiple versions but all mm. of them have really really good lens yeah um and it's so that they can have you know very little distortion you know yes. and very good rendition um because they need that for work so mm. yeah i actually have uh the zoom one at the moment oh, nice. yep um i've got all of the versions um but i've kind of slowly given them like I gave one to my son of yeah one away, you know, given one away there but um i've still got the 35 and the power zoom which is a 28 to 56 wow yeah do you have any of the nice orange ones or anything like I that i don't they are a stinker to find oh really um, yeah there was the orange ones, the green ones, and the blue ones. Blue ones. It was a weird blue gray color, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, they've become really hard to find now. So I've just, and there's a price premium put yeah. on them because yeah. of the color. And I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. The camera <laughs> so works the same. I, I yeah. just wanted a card. I just wanted a, a compact camera that worked that yeah. didn't break when I dropped it. Yeah. So, Absolutely, they're pretty tough. And I know you go out riding with yours, don't you? On your on your bicycle. Um, sometimes, yeah. Mm. Uh, I, but yes, we. I have taken them out on the bike. Yeah. And... It's a little bit big. Yeah. For the purpose, I'd rather have something like the Olympus Silas or the Mew or whatever sure. it's called. Yeah. Um, but they're just not up to the task. Yeah. You know, if you drop so, it or. Yeah, no, yeah. that's it's finished. If you drop one of those, so. right. 
So as well as a few of my friends here that I noticed on your website for sale, there was a very, I mean, beautiful, amazing stuff you've got on there, you know, like Nick, just amazing array of stuff for sale on the JCH website. There was something I've never seen before. And yeah. I, it was completely weird. And I wonder if you could tell us about that. I, I'll try and pronounce it here. The site's round shot 28 to 20. Um, yeah, actually. Um, yeah, that's a very cool camera. We just got it the other day. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's made by Alpa. Right. Uh, and it's a 360 true panoramic camera yep. on 120 or 220 film. Wow. That uses a Nikon PC28 lens from a 35 millimeter camera, which yep. is a tilt shift lens. Right. <laughs> um, so-, so you can get a 360. Well, you can actually take it up to infinite spins yeah. until the film runs out. So you could get true 360s which is more like a 4 420 or a 480 yeah. so that you can get the cut off to get the perfect image mm-hmm. if you know what I mean but it will take if you just do 360s and it, it's on a battery pack um I've actually got it over there but I don't want to yeah. skip on yeah and it's on a battery pack and you can program how your shutter speed you can you know the speed you want it to turn you can program uh how many revolutions wow and it will tell you how many shots you will get from a roll wow that's pretty cool on that so a 120 doing 360s is going to get about 4.2 4.3 shots yeah so it's it's not a cheap thing to use yeah yeah <laughs> no but um we i i've actually been waiting for the sun to come out so i can go and play with it yeah. and it's been just ghastly for the last two three four days yeah but i'm planning on taking it um a few places and trying it out uh just more than anything just because i've not used one before and i would yeah. love to go with it but it is what looks to be a fascinating camera mm. and it's got remotes release so you don't actually oh, have cool. to be in frame yeah 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 you can trigger the 360 it, yeah. without yeah. capturing your your midsection. <laughs> yes, excellent. I mean, when do you take a camera out? I mean, is it ever? I mean, will you review that camera, or do you sometimes just like to take cameras out and shoot with them, not yeah, under the pressure of? Like yeah, I mean, we do take cameras out to review. Yeah, um, I I haven't done a lot of reviews lately, but um, Michael does a lot yep. of reviews. We do take cameras out if we find something interesting or we want to share them on the YouTube channel. Sure. That's a case of having the time to do so. Yeah. As you know, making YouTube videos is extremely time Time intensive. That's right. Yeah. 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 So, but sometimes I just like to take things out for the sake of Mm. taking them out. Yeah. You know, um, and I think that's a really nice feeling uh, to be able to have the luxury to do that. Um, do, do you I, think that sometimes when you do a review or you you know I've got to do a review of this or I've got to do an, a blog about it do you think that kind of kills the fun sometimes yeah it does it puts a bit of pressure on it yeah um, unless it's something that it's really esoteric and you've not tried before and you just get into it anyway but if yeah. it's just like I have to review this camera yeah it, well I guess so you know um, but generally it, it's more I like just to try them out and if I like it then i'll perhaps do a review on it or yeah or something to that effect you know yeah brilliant so one thing i know from watching your instagram lives bellamy is that there is probably one question that you get asked more than anything else and of course people are just clamoring to know a bit more about fugu film now i don't want to be that guy that asks you again about it but i mean is there is there anything any kind of exclusive update that you can give us about it um at the moment, no, not really. Uh, I, we just finished testing the latest batch. Sure. That I can tell you. Um, and it's currently on its way to uh, be processed. Yep. Um, which is not as easy as it sounds because yep. it has to go back to the manufacturer to be processed. Right. Certain conditions. Yep. So, um is that because it's commercial in confidence or just because there's a particular processing technique? Oh, yeah, or? there's commercial in confidence and um, also uh, there's too many imbalances, variables. Sure. You know, uh, the lab might not have cleaned their machine. The lab might not have replaced their chems or, or some yeah. things. Yeah. It's not something that we want to put to chance. No. And 
come back and go, oh, sorry, we lost your roles or, you know. Yeah. 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 So, um, so it's been a very time intensive process. Uh, I don't have a lot more information. I that's all right. That's all right. I'll, I don't want to be like, I don't want to badge you about that. I guess I just have two, two smaller questions is that, yeah. you know, people are very excited that it's a 400 speed uh, color transparency film. Is yeah. it harder to make a 400 speed color transparency film than a 100 say? Yes, very much so. Very much so. Very much harder. You have to work your way up to 400. You don't start at just making a 400 you know sure. it starts with a base of uh, a 180 or a 230 or a 240 and and you work your way up to get mm -hmm. to the 400 and the higher you want to go the eight the 16 the harder it gets yeah sure um so we've been having to work our way up for quite a long time and there's been a lot of sort of things that have happened which have slowed it down obviously mm. i mean worldwide pandemic hasn't been the greatest mm. thing yep you know? um followed by a war in ukraine and so on and so forth a yeah. worldwide economic shutdown slow down so it's put a real um sort of it's it's really gummed up the works mm. you know? um we still we still have to just keep on working behind the scenes and and hoping yeah final, final question and I'm, I'm fingers crossed and i hope it goes very smoothly from now on the final question about fugu yeah. do you think and you don't have to answer but do you think we'll see it on shelves in 2023 i would like to hope so yes i'm sure um, i'm sure a lot of people would yeah fantastic i would like to hope so and i'm i'm hopeful yeah uh we'll have to see fingers crossed we'll uh, we're all yeah, uh, we're all rooting crossed. for you Jesus Christ, thank you. <laughs> Doing my yeah. best. <laughs> yes, absolutely. No, no pressure from the, the film community. <laughs> um, so uh, we're actually very excited in our household because uh, at Easter, we're actually coming to Japan. We haven't been anywhere for three years. We last went to the UK uh, to see my wife's family over there. So we're coming yep. back to Japan in March. And, nice. um, you know, we're hoping to see, we're going to Sapporo. We're hoping, hoping there's be snow in Sapporo in March. We're not sure. It will be. Oh, excellent brilliant yeah, good good um and we're not we're not much of skiers we're probably just like a make a snow person you know that, that, that oh, probably do us that. <laughs> oh, excellent good yeah. and then we're going to osaka and kyoto and tokyo hopefully see the sakura the the cherry blossom as well fingers crossed when are you coming in march uh late march so it's right at the end of march and we're coming through to about the 10th of april i think you catch sakura your cat yeah you might catch the end of it around oh, tokyo. Really? the end of it wow yeah. okay yep yep um, I think I think it's forecasted a little bit early this year. So. Oh, okay, cool. Fingers Not crossed. Not entirely sure though. Yeah. Um, there is actually a website you can go and check. It's the Sakura forecast. Oh, awesome! Wow, yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. Brilliant. So Excellent. It will tell you where things are. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So, in terms of um, you know Sapporo and Osaka and Kyoto. Is the camera, the use sort of camera scene, the film camera scene, is it as, I mean, I'm guessing it's not quite as big as, as Tokyo, but is there still active communities there that you know of? Or Sure. I don't know much about Sapporo. Um, I've only been there a couple of times on you know short breaks. Sure. Um, I haven't really spent any time there. I've, I've heard that there's quite an upcoming, you know, sort of photo community there. Yep. I'm not sure about stores wise. I, yeah. I don't know of any. Osaka and Kyoto again um I don't spend a huge amount of time there they're sort of places that I go visit it's it's quite a way actually to, yeah to go. um people kind of forget Japan's actually huge mm, yeah yeah <laughs> and it um but yeah Kyoto and um Osaka definitely have a camera scene there's in particular Osaka there's a mm. number of uh quite well-known camera stores oh, excellent uh, there and Kyoto too. Kyoto also has a couple of really good camera bookstores, but they are very expensive. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> oh, really good stuff though. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I, I would say that the main uh sort of the main crux of of the the camera industry, as it were, the used camera industry is in Tokyo. Sure. And is there any particular neighborhoods that you, you know, tell people to visit when they come along, either in terms of the camera shops or just because they're old traditional Japanese neighborhoods? Yeah. I mean, so for the camera shops, I always tell people to go and hit Shinjuku mm -hmm. because obviously Shinjuku has got a lot of stores and Ginza. There's actually a, a really good 
map resource on our website, which yes. we've put up, which lists a lot of the camera stores. You recently but updated maps, that, didn't you? Yeah. Yep. We had, uh, we've updated it. We need to update it again because there's more stores that have appeared. Oh, wow. Basically. Um, yeah. So we, we're probably going to have to do that at some point, but um, they, yeah, there's a lot of places to go for stores in Tokyo, you know, Ginza and all mm -hmm. of this, but then shooting wise, it, it, sometimes it's a bit different. You want to see perhaps something a bit more old school, a mm. bit more Japanese. Yeah old era showa era shoro jedi as they say or something you know so then you have to sort of go out to the suburbs a little bit um because a lot of central tokyo is very heavily developed and very frequently heavily developed mm -hmm. so having not been for three plus years you're going to go to places and go hey where did where did that where did that entire <laughs> building go yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah that was a department store there and now it's not mm. uh, um so i we are in western tokyo mm -hmm. and there is i like uh, uh nakano and koenji and asagaya they still retain that sort of really great old vibe to them sure. um also a little bit of northern tokyo like nippori and places like that around ueno and above ueno are really oh, yeah. nice um yeah. there's still a lot of interesting stuff to see there i i tend to find shinjuku and shibuya and all of this they're just really heavily overdeveloped now yeah they've lost a sense of character sure so it's a case of maybe getting on the train for 20 minutes or you know to get a bit yeah. out and you'll yeah. find or even just walking from the center you just pick a direction and go and see what you find yeah we we do that sometimes and it's great fun excellent well i've yeah. um I have actually, I, I think I saw on your YouTube, you went to the JCII Museum. Mm -hmm. Is that the right? We've got the name right. Yep. And um, yep. so that's actually on my on my list. Uh, my, my son wants to go to a cafe. It's a cafe in Tokyo where there's not only cats, there's a capybara, which is a South American rodent, apparently. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm very familiar with capybara. Oh, yeah. are you? <laughs> Excellent. Because I had to explain to my mother yesterday what a capybara was. So I, I said to my son, I made a deal with him. I said, I'll take you to the capybara cat cafe but you have to come to the camera museum he wasn't particularly impressed but he's agreed to it so <laughs> there are a proliferation of these um uh cafes around yeah. tokyo there is one next to my gym which is the penguin yeah. cafe no and way penguins in there no way I'll have to right? tell you about that. and i i haven't been in but i thought to myself god it must stink yeah it must absolutely yeah. stink in it. i've been yeah. around penguins and Ooh, yeah you know um there's also a hedgehog cafe there's an no owl way. cafe this is yeah. just in the town the, the suburb that yeah. you know i mean there's there's all of these uh these places yeah. you know where you can handle pets and drink coffee that's the um, thing i think i think i might just get a coffee and we'll pay the admission i don't think i'll be getting any food or anything and i'll i'll be no. guarding my coffee you know i don't want capybara or penguin you know hair or capybara fur. are pretty big yeah um they're very docile though. Mm. Um, they're very chill. So chances are, I mean, they they're not going to have a wild animal <laughs> <You're> running around, <laughs> just yeah. letting loose on you. Yeah. They're, they're in yeah. would never allow yeah. it. Um, yeah, there, there's there's a ton of those things. Yeah, mm. I think you've stuck a pretty good deal because that camera museum's way bigger than a a capybara cafe. Oh, so yeah. Excellent. Might be there for a while. Sounds yeah. good. And so also thinking about, um, you know, I was looking at the other day, I was doing some research about, you know, things to do in Tokyo, even though I've been twice before, things change all the time. And I did mm. see near, I think near Tokyo, uh, the main station, there is some kind of antique market. I can't remember what it's called now for the life of me. But I yeah, mean, do, there was are there this, many? Um, Setagaya Flea Market, but it's mm -hmm. only just started reopening. Um, I think they had one last weekend. Okay. Are they the kind I, of places I, that you would you would find cameras or not or um not really not anymore mm. or i mean you used to be able to there 10 years ago you know because people were just clearing out their stuff but yeah. now people got a bit more savvy and there's yeah. online platforms like mercari where they can sell their things so they just yeah. do that instead um now the antiques market are generally more for actual antiques sure. and and furniture and you know that sort of stuff there are no really there's well i've never seen a car boot sale here i don't think they exist yeah 
Because like, I guess a lot of people wouldn't have cars, would they? Or Well, they do. They're just not going to sell stuff from at, the back, at the back of the British way. <laughs> I mean, there, there's the classifieds in this country are totally different mm. from what we're used to. You know, you yeah. don't find classifieds selling cars or selling cameras or anything like that. People mm. just take it to the shop they bought it from and sell it back to them. Oh, wow. Including cars. Yeah. yeah. Um, I I know of almost no people who've sold their cars personally. They've always just sold them back to the dealer. Yeah. You know, um, and that's how it works. And it's the same really with cameras in yeah. many cases. And in fact, to the, to the case that I know of a camera store, which has been open for more than 50 years here in Tokyo. And I was speaking to the owner and, you know, he's in his nineties now and, wow. and, I said he had a wonderful uh, black paint Lycra M3 in. And I said, oh, that's absolutely gorgeous. Where did that come from? He said, one of my old customers bought it 40 years ago. Wow. Passed away. And um, his family found the receipt and bought it back to us. Wow. <laughs> Gosh, it's amazing. <laughs> um, along with a, a hefty payday, I think. Yeah. Did you buy it? Oh, fuck. No, no, <laughs> that one was way too much for me. Yeah. Too rich. But... Yeah. So as well as say the JCII museum and, you know, camera store, the camera shops, are there anything else in Tokyo that you'd recommend for photographers? Nikon museum. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, definitely worth a look. Um, it's always fun. There is also, um, there's a plethora of galleries here. Sure. There's the Epson have one, Fujifilm have one, Canon have one, which have always got rotating exhibits. Um, and in there, you can also find a lot of cards for smaller galleries oh, and excellent. exhibits yeah. and Place M and all of these sort of, there's there's tons of, uh, you know, Rat Hole and all of this. There's tons of galleries all over Tokyo. Yeah. Um, which are good, uh, you know, good day out, good to find. There's yeah. also bookshops you know and jim bocho and places like that uh -huh. um, which do photo books galore mm. you know i think if anyone went to nakano broadway in nakano and just walked around there you could spend a solid day walking around there just looking for books looking for cameras yep. and taking photos of the weird back streets yeah wow okay so that's Easily. nakano is it yeah okay and if you're into watches that place is like gold as well so Th thankfully not <laughs> i've got, I've got it, it's kind of this weird place it's it's got cameras it's got watches and then yeah. it's got highly collectible rare japanese toys trading cards wow magazines manga figurines yeah, yeah it's 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 a geeks uh aladdin's cave. paradise yeah yeah absolutely Brilliant. I'm really looking forward to the trip. So thank you for the tips there. Uh, so I've just got a few more questions. Hopefully you've got another 10 minutes or so. I've just got a few yeah, more questions yeah. to finish off. Is that okay? Sure. Excellent. So these are kind of just completely random questions that don't fit into anything. Um, so I'm not sure if you know anything about this, but I did hear once that Polaroid was never popular in Japan because Japanese consumers didn't like the palette. The palette was a little bit almost alternative reality, almost. It wasn't very lifelike. And they, they took more to say the Instax, uh, which of course came out of the Kodak's uh, technology. Have you ever heard that or is that just something yes. people? Okay. I have heard this actually. Um, and it's not, you're not the first person to have mentioned this to me. I have heard this before. I don't know of the veracity of it. Yep. Exactly. Um, but I, I do know that Polaroid was certainly less popular here than the Fuji yep. um, stuff because Fuji had their own peel apart, which was the FP. Mm. And that was a more sensitive color tone to, I think, the Japanese market, which is a really appealing color tone as well. Mm. Um, and unfortunately, they discontinued that as Fuji's want to do. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, I'm not going to go too deep into that one. But uh, yeah, the, so I... I there was a lot of, or there used to be a fair amount of Polaroid cameras available here, but I don't wow. think ever on the level that you would find them overseas. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, and t it tended to be more the land cameras, yep. things like that, which could utilize the Fuji Pack mm. film anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So I still yeah, have about. Maybe a dozen... there is some truth to it. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I still have about a dozen uh, packs of FP100C and I've got a couple of laying camera. I've got the big shot up there somewhere, but I'm, it's right. kind of the point now where I'm kind of scared to to use them because they're so expensive, but I, I will definitely have to try and do that this year. Um, yes. now, speaking of Fujifilm, uh, I just bought some Superior 400 here with the expiry yep. date 2025. Now, mm -hmm. again, uh, I'm, I'm hoping I'm not uh, asking you a sensitive question here, but I mean, what do you, do you, do you know anything? Do you, is there any whispers on the ground? Like, do you think yeah. Fujifilm are still actually producing film or is it, you know, there was a conspiracy theory about the old master rolls in a freezer somewhere. What, what's your take on all of that? It's not a conspiracy theory. Really? As far as I'm concerned, yeah, yeah. So you uh, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly well in tune with the the what's going on here, and I know people who are in contact with Fujifilm, and I know at the last annual general shareholders meeting there was no mention of film at all. Wow. Um, the only mention, the only reference to anything even slightly film related was Instax. Mm -hmm. which there is a heavy focus on and the cosmetic industry yes which spin off of the um a spin off of the uh chemical industry which was the film industry mm. i don't believe that fujifilm are producing any roles of their own emulsions now right um the requirements they would have to make them would be absolutely enormous Mm. And from an I, environmental sort of point of view do you mean not or? just environmental i mean the, the the production levels that they would have to make um so that they could turn what they consider a profit a meaningful profit would be astronomical mm. um you know whereas they used to have these machines running every day 24 hours a day they're, they're not the sort of machines you can just switch on and switch off when you need them sure sure it doesn't work like that yeah um, unfortunately yeah um you know once you switch them off they might not switch back on yeah that's uh, right yeah which can be a bit of a problem so um i don't believe that fuji are and from what i hear from people i know fuji have not been in actual production of film for a number of years now mm. but they do have an absolutely enormous amount of frozen stock yeah which can last indefinitely because the batch date you know the expiry date comes from when it becomes unfrozen <laughs> out. yeah that's right, right. Yeah. yeah so from then on that's your expiry date yeah. so they could keep on doing this if they have enough mm. for the next 10 years so I, th I guess the pattern the pattern of i think i don't know how this the, the sort of you know the rumor or the idea came about but certainly if you think about it logically the pattern of them you know, having all these films or having quite a few films and then discontinuing certain ones, it doesn't mm. really make any sense at the time when film was becoming popular. So it, it all does point back to, we ran out, we had it in the freezer and it's run out now. Yeah. And it, it also sort of comes back to um, Fuji didn't foresee the idea of film coming back. Mm. They threw everything into the X line and into Instax. Yeah. And, you know, um, so they actually, in a way, kind of were complicit in trying to make film disappear. <laughs> you know, um, they did what they felt was going to be the most financially suitable position for their shareholders. Yep. Which it has been. Yep. Um, they're not prepared to take risks for shareholders. No. Um, and the shareholders have not been calling for return of this, film. <laughs> yeah, you know, sure. yeah. so it, to them it's it's totally irrelevant yeah. um i i don't i mean i think there's probably people in fujifilm who are like we should be doing this but their voices are drowned out i i i used to know somebody who was working in the film marketing department and he said it had basically been cut down to like four people wow. and one vote yeah wow. yeah in yeah. an office yeah. in the back of the building because nobody wanted to have anything to do with yeah. them wow. you know their, their budget had been slashed um completely so uh unfortunately you know people ask me the question would those machines ever be for sale can you negotiate and no they wouldn't i know people who have come over to this country to try and negotiate with fujifilm and have been shown the door mm. so because yeah. they can always do something for something else.
So, yeah. Or they don't want somebody to copy their stuff. So. Yeah, yeah. They make money off <laughs> yeah. it, yeah. Yeah. Very, so, very interesting. Hmm. Yeah. Um, no, it's not the greatest of news, but at the same time, I feel hopeful that it gives others opportunities to make something of the industry. Yeah. Um, how, how do you think, yeah. I mean, it's an interesting viewpoint where you put what you said about Fujifilm and I, yeah. What, how does that sort of then mesh with say what Rico Pentax are trying to do where they're looking to hopefully bring back film cameras in the near future? It's, it's an interesting kind of juxtaposition, isn't it? Yeah, it is um, very much so. It, and it was very left field, sort of unexpected news from Pentax Rico. Mm. Um, but then again, Pentax Rico is a much smaller company mm. and much more maneuverable. Yeah. Change and, direction easier. Yeah. Fujifilm is the sort of company that's glacial in its changes due to, just due to its enormity. Mm. Um, it is a huge company it, with multiple, multiple interests. Whereas Rico is very much more a focused, Pentax Rico is very much more a focused company. Yeah. Um, so they are able to commit resources to yep. something like that. And I which think. camera? I mean, they were talking about a, a compact and a premium compact as their first two cameras. Which ones would you like to see them bring back? So um, this was what confused me because they said, initially, when I first saw the thing, the, the release, it said, you know, researching cameras. And I thought, and they're going to use the Pentax brand name. And I thought, well, obviously it's going to be an SLR. That's what Pentax are famous for. They're SLRs, you know, maybe they're medium format stuff, but yeah. but and if if they were going to make a compact, surely they would have branded it Rico, because mm. you know, that's what we know Rico for. Yeah. And then they said, no, we're going to be working on a compact. And I yeah. hold on a minute. <laughs> <laughs> hold on a minute. What's going on here? Um so it's left me a little bit stumped as to what they're doing. I saw the video. They are 3D printing their prototypes based on previous models. Wow. So it could be an amalgamation mm. of a number of things. Um, I mean, logically, the compact camera route is going to be the easiest to slide into to get into the market. It's going to be the least outlay mm. because it's much less complicated to make than an slr mm -hmm. um they have the experience but pentax pentax compacts uh. well that's the thing i did a video um just, before, uh, just after christmas about five cameras that they could look at only yeah. one of them on the list was the pentax the pentax sbo mini yeah the other four compacts one. yeah were, we're all rico because SBO. you know I don't, yeah. I don't really want a pentax zoom camera coming back because it wouldn't no. as a you know as an enthusiast a zoom doesn't really suit me so <laughs> I, I think, I mean, I, I've rewatched the video several times and I think there's um, people definitely working there with heart who know what they're doing, who yeah. really want to make a, a classic style compact camera. Mm. So I think, you know, I, I, I can't speculate. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's, 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 it's a very it's exciting thing. dangerous territory <laughs> well it's a very exciting uh development anyway and we're all uh you it know is. i'm waiting just to hear more. eagerly awaiting and saying to rico like hey hit me up yeah. if you need help oh excellent <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. um they do, probably don't listen but uh you know so, I just, going back I'm you... just Sorry. excited to see any company making mm. this kind of step i think yeah. it's vitally important so Absolutely. Now, I've just thought of another question. Uh, so a few years ago, I know that you were looking at bringing back a compact camera yourself. Yeah. And I think, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the sticking point was the shutter because not many people make shutters. Is that correct? So, well, there was a couple of sticking points. The main sticking point was the shutter. Uh, vertical plane shutter was made by Copal um, under license. It was actually made by Cosina under license for Copal and then um Cosina's license expired so they can no longer make them mm. and Copal the company itself went into receivership and it was sold off as part of a tranche of of company um intellectual property sure um copyrights and so on uh, which made it unavailable to actually get or copy that shutter so mm. the I, the only thing we could think of was to completely recreate a new one which would be incredibly expensive 
yeah. or you use old ones, but then you can't guarantee the camera. So yeah, yeah. And so how um, does that? I mean, uh, this is probably a massive question, but how does the development of a shutter like that differ from, say, the shutters we get in our our digital cameras? That I don't know too much about. I'm not going to say. Sure. Um, it's probably, it's probably quite a big answer. Um, I, I know that for the compact cameras, it was a case of size, weight, right, and and so on. That, yeah. Um, and also, I think the I, I don't know enough about digital cameras to know. You know, I know that um, one company wanted to use Sony shutters in their. They were going to make a film camera, and they were going to use Sony shutters for the wow. camera. Mm -hmm. believe um and sony just wouldn't let them mm, yeah you know so there is also a case of i believe that a lot of these companies are like no this is our tech you yeah. can't have and sony happened to own the i'm guessing the konica minolta yeah uh, blueprints as well apps, apps yeah yeah um, i think a lot of the original film cameras used a very similar um shutter basis so we yeah it, it's it was looking to the point where we would have to build a factory. Yeah, okay. I, I, that's a big task. I'm not to do that, yes. so. yeah. <laughs> you know. Excellent. Well, I, I think that's all the the hard hitting, heavy uh, questions. <laughs> I've just got a couple of other slightly lighter ones. So, of course, I know I asked you on a live stream if you like cricket, and as a, as a good Englishman, of course, you said you love cricket. So, growing yeah. up, you are a few years younger than me, but growing up, you know, who were your who was your favorite cricketer? Beefy Botham. Oh, Ian Botham. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yes. Yeah, Beefy. Um, yeah. He was, uh, he reminded me of my dad in some way. Yeah. My yeah. dad had the same hair and beard. Yeah. You know, and my dad would go onto the green and rub the ball and, yeah. you know, you know yeah. on his, his whites. And, yeah. And, you know, so, yeah, back then, for me, it was beefy, but beefy both, and that's my generation. Yeah, well, uh, he always had such a, a charisma, didn't he? And he was very swashbuckling. I think he played yeah. actually played for Queensland a few matches. I think they, they you know, kicked him out of Queensland. The sort of bloke that you thought oh, I could go, and, you know, swing a few with him, and then go and absolutely. have a few pints. Uh, pints you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, that's that's fascinating. And do you, do you get to watch much cricket over there, or is it not on no, pretty well? Not at all. Yeah, um, I mean, there it, it's not it's not really a thing that's seen here yeah rugby's only just started sort of yeah. becoming popular sure uh, uh so cricket i mean i get to watch some of the matches on youtube and whatnot oh, yeah yeah it's about it. and things like that and that's about it um i used to live when i was at university i used to live next to edge baston oh yeah nice, um, nice which was great so i used to go there from time to time yeah excellent um, but Brilliant. Yeah, okay, Japan so... doesn't really have a um, cricket scene, unfortunately. No, no I won't be... baseball maybe, but de baseball yeah. definitely. But yeah, yeah. Okay, so thank you so much for your time today, Bellamy. Uh, I've really You're appreciate welcome. you you chatting to me. Uh, I've got a few yeah. other questions, but I think we're running out of time, and I've I've got to be conscious of your your precious time. So no, I've just got welcome. a few more questions yep. to ask you. There's a bit of a speed round here. I've got a handful. Sure. You've got to choose one of these, one or the other, without thinking too much. Okay, right. so are you ready for the speed round? Yep. Uh, Tokyo or London? Tokyo. Asahi or Sapporo? Sapporo. Uh, Japanese whiskey or Scotch whiskey? Japanese. Uh, Kodak or Fujifilm? Kodak. <laughs> uh, snow or Sakura? Sakura. Uh, Nikon or Leica? Uh, Nikon. Yeah, I thought you were going to say Nikon straight off the bat. That's interesting. And my last <laughs> question, would you rather, if you went back in time, would you rather be a sumo or a samurai? Uh, samurai. A samurai. I think. <laughs> yeah. So it's probably either one of them would lead to an early death. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> low low uh, age expectancy. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you so much, Bellamy. I really appreciate your time today. It's been thank wonderful you chatting me. to you. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, and thank you for having me on the show. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Cheers. Bye-bye. Take care. Cheers.